Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena game for video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck and we've got a pretty spicy deck for you in store today. It's called Hedron of Hailfire. It's a mono black ramp deck that's trying to close out the game with a big torment of Hailfire. So the deck's not really meant to be all that competitive, but resolving a big torment of Hailfire is very satisfying. So torment of Hailfire is X and double black for a sorcery that says repeat the following process X times. Each opponent loses three life unless that player sacrifices a non-land permanent or discards a card. So the goal is to just cast a Torment of Hailfire that's so large that the opponent essentially loses the game on the spot because they don't have enough non-land permanents to sacrifice or enough cards in hand to discard and then they end up taking three damage for each mana we can sink into the Torment of Hailfire. So a Torment of Hailfire for X equals 7 could technically deal 21 damage if the opponent doesn't have any cards in hand or non-land permanents in play they can sacrifice. So usually the first Torment of Hailfire is not quite going to be lethal but the second one if we can play it for enough mana is usually going to be game over. So let's take a look at the entire decklist. You might notice some similarities with the mono black control deck we featured a few days ago. This deck goes into a slightly different direction, foregoing the Masterminds acquisition package and replacing those cards with a bit more ramp so we can cast a bigger torment of Hailfire. At one mana we still have the full playset of Thoughtseize as some one mana interaction to disrupt opposing combo decks. Then we've got four copies of Guardian Idol, a two mana artifact that enters a battlefield tapped and then can produce colorless mana and can also turn into a 2-2 golem creature that can maybe help us pressure opposing planeswalkers. Then we also have four copies of Maze Mind Tome, a nice card draw engine that can draw us four cards. And if we don't have the mana to sink into the card draw ability, we can still just tap it to scry one and improve our draw steps. And then we of course have the full playset of Mindstone, which can help us ramp and we can tap it for mana the same turn we play it. And if we're flooding out a bit, we can always sacrifice it to draw a card. Then we've got our four copies of Torment of Hailfire. Usually gonna save it for as long as possible so we can cast it for a large amount. Then we do need a little bit of interaction for creatures, which is why we have two copies of Cry of the Carnarium and two copies of Extinction Event so we don't get run over by creature decks. And then we've got four copies of Hedron Archive for more ramp, a four mana artifact that taps to produce double colorless, so we can potentially play the archive and then tap it for two mana and still play one of our two mana artifacts afterwards. And we can also sacrifice the archive to draw two cards if we're flooding out a bit. And then we also have two copies of Karn, a sign of Urza, which is perfect in this deck as the plus one ability reveals the top two cards of our library and then the opponent can choose one of them to put into exile and the other one goes into her hand. So what often happens when you plus one Karn is that the opponent's just going to give you a land if there's a land and a spell revealed with the plus one ability. But in this deck where we're trying to cast a giant Torment of Hailfire, we're pretty happy to just keep hitting our land drops. So Karn giving us extra lands is very useful. And then at some point we can use the minus one to maybe grab a Torment of Hailfire or some other finisher out of exile and the minus two can also generate a big construct token that gets larger the more artifacts we have in play. And then moving up the curve we've got three copies of Dreamstone Hedron, a card I didn't even know was on Arena until yesterday. It's essentially a bigger version of Hedron Archive, so it's six mana and taps for three and we can also sacrifice it to draw three cards. And then last but not least we've got two copies of Ugin the Spirit Dragon which can also be ramped into and then the minus X can be a nice board sweeper to reset the board and then the plus two can deal additional damage to the opponent to complement or torment of Hailfire. And then the mana base, 22 swamps alongside three copies of Cabal Stronghold and Cabal Stronghold can also help us produce extra mana which is why we don't have any Castle Lochthwains or other lands. And that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play and facing Lurus of the Dream Den. Hopefully it's not a Spirit Dancer deck, otherwise we should probably mulligan for Thoughtseize. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'll keep. We've got Double Idol for Ramp, Maze Mind Tomes for Card Draw. It's gonna be a Swamp into Thoughtseize instead. Our hand is pretty redundant, so it's not too bad. Play Guardian Idol first to develop our mana, in case we draw maybe a Hedron Archive, we can play that next turn. And otherwise we can still play both of our cards out, so our hand is nice and empty in case they have another Thoughtseize coming up. So 
we were up against a red-black Pyromancer deck. I do want to play Cabal Stronghold, but I guess we don't need to reveal it just yet. And then I could scry with a Tome, although I might just want to draw with it instead. And Dreadhorde Arcanist, that is a problematic card since it can flash back all sorts of cards from the graveyard, including Thoughtseize. So, do I scry with Tome? I think I still just take my draw step. Archive is nice. So now I can play Archive, I guess. I don't get to animate both Guardian Idols to block the Arcanists, which would be a different alternative here. But it also doesn't work if they have a shock in hand. But now I get to end of turn, draw with the Maze Mind Tome if my opponent Thought seizes me. They don't get to take away anything. And then we've got a ton of mana, so if we top deck Ugin the Spirit Dragon or Torment of Hailfire, we'll be in decent shape. So let's see what they flash back. Goes for the village right, sacking the supplier instead. So if the game drags out, we can definitely overpower the Pyromancer deck. If they can make a 5-5 demon here with Archfiend's Vassal or potentially escape Croxa out of the graveyard. That could be problematic since that can apply a lot of pressure quickly. It's gonna be Young Pyromancer for now into Stitcher Supplier. Alright, so let's draw with the Maze Mine Tome now. We drew a Swamp. Do I want to scry here? I think I still just take my draw step. More swamps. So let's see, how much mana can we make? Five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if I activate Tome and draw into Ugin Spirit Dragon, I won't be able to play it right now. So maybe I'm better off just passing the turn and then again drawing with the Tome end of turn. Now that I have two cards in hand, they're more likely to flash back a Thought Seize. And then they'll see the two swamps. Now I do have enough mana to animate both Guardian Idols. But of course that also runs into an opposing shock, killing one of them. Which we want to avoid. So our opponent attacks. Does flashback Thoughtseize. That's fine. And I'll just take 4 damage. And then next turn if we play another Swamp, Cabal Stronghold will actually generate additional mana. There's Croxa, so that's potentially an issue next turn. Gets rid of one of our Swamps. And end of turn we'll draw. Ooh, Dreamstone Hedron. That's pretty exciting. Alright, let's uh, take our draw step. Extinction events, great too. So we can make a bunch of mana. Play Hedron. And then play Extinction events, naming even. getting rid of Arcanist and Paramancer. Could have potentially waited until they get back Croxa, but that seems a bit greedy. Alright, they will Village Rights in response. And then do I still name even? Yeah, probably. And then we'll wait to draw with the Tome end of turn. And then I just need to find a Torment of Hailfire, which can potentially close out the game. 
So they do have enough mana to potentially play Shock and escape Croxa. So if they attack with the Supplier, I'm still not really interested in blocking with the Guardian Idol. Alright, they played another Arcanist instead. Maybe they can give it haste somehow. Yep, claim to reanimate a creature and then Fame can give the Arcanist haste. So, taking another 4 damage, but now Guardian Idol can block the Supplier for free, essentially. As long as we tamper mana correctly. Call of the Death Dweller can get back Croxa once again for 3 more damage. But they go for Paramancer and Supplier instead. So we'll animate Guardian Idol. And then we can still tamp the Idol to draw with Tome. So yeah, if we don't find the Torment of Hailfire or Ugin the Spirit Dragon soon, we will just be dead. But we've got the right setup for it. Another Hedron. Alright, I think I gotta upkeep Scry here. We'll gain 4 life. Don't need Mind Stone right now. And another Tome. Alright, so can I survive another turn here? They could potentially escape Croxa and give it haste. Which probably ends up killing me. So I don't know if I can um, afford to just play out both my cards and try and draw into a finisher next turn. Although I guess I can always animate the Guardian Idols to block. So I think I'm gonna take the risk of just playing a Hedron, playing a Tome and then see where we end up. Gonna be a young Paramancer instead. That's fine. Give it hastes. Thanks with all. And Arcanist flashes back Villagerites. So I probably will need to block the 4-1 Young Paramancer, otherwise I would just be dead to a shock. So we'll animate one Guardian Idol. And then I can probably afford to animate the other one too, just to soak up one damage. And then we can still draw with the Maze Mind Tome. Uh, they're gonna shock one of them, that's fine. And I guess we'll uh, go to blocks. Block the Paramancer, take four. What if I just take everything here? I would go to one. They haven't played land yet, so I would be dead to land into another shock. So yeah, I probably have to block here. And then, uh, no need to draw with the Tome yet, so otherwise it could maybe go Swamp Thoughtseize. Alright, opponent passes, so we'll draw. And then upkeep, I probably need to scry with the Tome here. In the hopes of finding Torment of Hailfire. Bottom the Swamp. Alright, there it is. I don't know how much mana we can make here. But... 15, so x equals 13. Although now they have a million tokens they can sacrifice, so that's probably gonna 
save them here. Yeah, them making five tokens last turn is probably going to be enough to stay alive. Maybe I should try to draw towards a Cry of the Carnarium or Extinction event. Torment is just not going to be enough here. So let's draw with, I guess, one of the Hedrons. Alright, I guess that works. We're going to Spirit Dragon minus two. And then I don't think I want to thought seize here. To the of the and then hopefully next turn we can cast a lethal torments. Although we could be dead to some more hasty creatures. Plenty of cards to discard to Croxa that I don't mind getting rid of. Cry and thought seize. Alright, so now we can finally sink all our mana into the Stormants. X equals 14, should be enough. And then we still have three more damage from Ugin. Alright, GG's. And our opponent just concedes. Sadly, didn't get to see the satisfying three life loss over and over again. But uh, yeah, there we go. Close one against the Rakdos Pyromancer. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with uh, keepable hands. Typically, we don't love seeing Torment of Hailfire in our opening hands. But the rest of our hand is good enough that I'm still keeping facing goblins. Goblins is a pretty difficult matchup. Essentially need our sweepers to keep us in the game. And double snoop, goblin matron, chieftain. They're pretty light on mana. Only two lands, but of course a prospector can generate more. I mean, taking a snoop doesn't do much here, so it's either chieftain or matron. Probably just going for chieftain as it represents the most damage. There is an argument for still just taking like a snoop because then we can maybe extinction event for odds getting rid of prospector and one of their three mana cards. So we know they're drawing gem palm. Next turn they're drawing a land. So I could Extinction Event for even now. Yeah, don't hate that. Prospector is definitely a big threat, so not getting it over the board is a little sketchy. Our opponent briefly considered maybe sacrificing the Snoop so they could cycle Gem Palm, but if they sack both Snoops, I can just name Odd and get rid of the Prospector instead. Once we choose out or even, our opponent can no longer respond. Matron gets Muxes, of course. So we'll need another Thought Seize to take that away. Well, there it is. And then Maze Mind Tome. Could just draw here, or I can play double tome to start scrying instead. I do need card quantity here since we need lands to go with the torments. So I think I prefer just drawing with the tome as opposed to playing a second one. But I'll probably scry with the first tome on upkeep. Okay. 
And then I guess ramping into an Ugin the Spirit Dragon can also be pretty effective against goblins. If they ever find Krenko Mob Boss, it also kind of negates the effectiveness of Torment since they can just make infinite goblin tokens to sacrifice instead. Not a Prospector. At least they're not dealing a ton of damage. So we want more ramp and lance, I guess. I won't say no to a Cry of the Cornarium. We already have a land for the turn, so I think I can afford to bottom that one. And then... Play Tome. Can still draw a card. And I probably don't need double black here. Alright, Karn Sign of Urza can also make some tokens to maybe block. Although I guess with another Jump Palm in hand, they can just kill it. So if they have a Muxus, we could just be dead. Alright, gotta cross our fingers that they don't hit a Haste Enabler. Oh, that's a Haste Enabler, so that's game over. Yeah, the Goblin matchup is pretty difficult for the deck. We pretty much had the ideal setup with double Thoughtseize and a Sweeper, but it wasn't enough. Let's see what we would have drawn with the Mind Stone here. At some point I did still have Heartless Act in a deck, which is useful at, like, taking out a Muxus. But I found that just adding more ramp was a little bit more consistent for the Torment of Hailfire plan. Adding too much interaction just diluted our game plan a little bit too much. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Facing Lurus of the Dream Den with double Thoughtseize and a Dream Sanhedrin. I'll keep. Definitely a fine hand against the Spirit Dancer deck as we can potentially take away both our creatures. Ooh, it's a Banned Spirits deck instead. Probably for Collected Company, but no 3-drops with Lurus. It's a little surprising. Well, I guess I'm taking Watcher of the Spheres. Try and take away as many creatures as possible to make the Rally of Wings worse as well. I guess for now I can still play Tome, because I'll still be able to take away one of the Shackle guys with Thoughtseize next turn. And in the meantime I get to Scry and maybe draw with Tome. Ooh, they drew a Skycat Sovereign. Alright. Yeah, I'll take a Mind Stone. So once again, I think I don't Thought Seize yet, and instead just draw with Tome. Because Thought Seizing away one Shackle Geist doesn't matter, I can just take away the other one next turn. And I might end up taking the Rally of Wings anyway if we draw a Sweeper. Karn's not terrible. So do I scry with Tome to maybe find a Cry of the Carnarium? Or Extinction Events? Yeah, I think I do. Alright, perfect. So we can cry. They did have Lofty Denial, we'll just take the Shacklegeist and then leave them without any pressure. Opponent has to pass. So we've got 5 mana, I'm not gonna tap out for Hedron since they have a Lofty Denial. But I'm probably just gonna play Karn Sinoversa here, which we can pay for the Lofty Denial. And then just start plussing to draw some more lands. Ooh, they drew a Spectral Sailor. That's unfortunate. 
Now they get to Lofty Denial countering Karn. Yep. At least we got that out of the way. Shocks in the Hallowed Fountain, so they can draw with Spectral Sailor, presumably. They could also put Lurus in their hands. Nope, Gust of Wind on the Mind Stone, sure. And then we'll still hold the Tome, I think, for the time being. Can go Idle plus play Mind Stone. And the next turn I can play Hedron and draw with Tome. Not under a ton of pressure, but opponents can start drawing with the Sailor or maybe use Lurs to get some creatures back from the graveyard next turn. Alright, so we'll play Hedron. And then draw main phase. And then I can still play another Maze Mind Tome as well. Maybe should have played the other Tome first in order to scry, but if we found a Thoughtseize I maybe wanted to take away Lurus. I'll play another Guardian Idol for now to have more mana. Opponent passes, so they're probably just going to draw with Spectral Sailor. Alright, do I start sacrificing Mind Stone? Could also try and attack with Guardian Idol, they could technically Rally of Wings to ambush it, but I probably don't care too much if that happens. Yeah, I guess we can chip in for two. And then I can still draw with the Mind Stone, play another idol, I guess. Alright, well, if we can resolve Ugin the Spirit Dragon, we'll be in pretty good shape. And I can even pay for Lofty Denial. Opponent doesn't replay anything from the graveyard, so they're keeping up 4 mana. I guess if they have double Lofty Denial, we're in trouble. But yeah, I have 9, 10, 11, 12 mana, so that's Ugin plus 4 mana for Lofty Denial. So we'll just take our draw step. And uh, play Ugin. Yeah, I'll pay. Do they have another one? Wow, if they do. Alright, fair enough. Well, opponent's down to one card in hand, but Lurus can provide quite a bit of advantage. So I probably need to scry with the Tome to dig towards more action. Might be able to win if we draw Torment of Hailfire here, since we've got a ton of mana. Bottom. So how much mana do I have? 13. So let's say I draw with the Tome instead of scrying 11 mana so I can torment for 9. Sack 3 permanents, discard 2 cards. So 4 left, that's only 12 damage. If we add back the 2 from the Tome draw, that would be... Uh, 18 damage here, if I'm not mistaken. 
So if I scry into Torment, they're just dead. Alright, let's see if that's actually accurate. X equals 11. I guess they can still draw once with the Sailor. I forgot to factor that in. So they might not quite be dead. But they will have to sack their entire board. Goodbye, Sailor. If we can get rid of Lurus, that would be a big victory. Lurus is gone, point falls to two. So yeah, we were one short because of the Spectral Sailor. Ooh, Skycat Sovereign, that's actually kind of a scary draw since that can start generating tokens as well. I guess never mind, they're just dead to the Guardian Idols attacking now. They can only make one token. So as long as I accurately tap my mana here, they should be dead. GG's. Guardian Idol does have the tendency to tap itself if you activate it, so you always have to manually tap to activate Guardian Idol. Opponent makes a token. Attack with all. Close one here against the Band Flyers deck. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a nice opening hand. Turn to Mindstone into turn 3 Archive plus Tome. Facing Leyline of Abundance, so the Scribe the Carnarium is going to be pretty useful. Maybe Thoughtseize can take away a Planeswalker like Nyssa or Carnegrade Creator, which totally shuts down our deck otherwise. So our opponent playing Carnegrade Creator is not a good sign for us. Hopefully they don't draw another one. Could see a Nyssa this turn already. It's gonna be Vivian instead. Puts the Paradise Root out of range from the Cry of the Carnarium. So a scary start from our opponents. I think I prioritize playing Tome. And then gotta dig for Ugin the Spirit Dragon pretty much to clean up this mess. We're fit enough to survive. Guardian Idol, no thanks. Do I keep a second? So maybe I should. I get two more scries towards an Ugin. And next turn we'll have the mana to play him. I guess I can even draw with the tome now. Well, I get essentially four scries to look for Ugin the Spirit Dragon. Another Ley Line, that's fine. <laughs> Hits us for eight. Time. Extinction Event would also keep us alive, so I'll probably keep that one on top too. Torment of Hailfire. Yeah, it's only going to be for six, so that's definitely not enough. Alright, last scry. And then we can always draw with Mindstone to find Extinction Events. Dreamstone Hedron. 
So, I'm going to draw with the Mind Stones here, I think. If I play Hedron, then I won't have the mana to sack Mind Stone and play Extinction Events, so... Torments. So last draw towards Extinction Events. And I'm probably still dead to Vivian minus fiving and getting a questing beast out of the sideboard, so... Yeah, we're just dead here. Let's see what we would have drawn. How close were we to an Ugin Spirit Dragon? Not that close. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, nice looking hands. Turn 1 Thoughtseize and then we can hopefully ramp into a turn 3 Archive, which lets me play another 2-drop. Facing the Sanctum deck, nice. Well, uh, probably just want to take the cheapest Sanctum. Don't care about the spot removal. And they're pretty far from Hondon of Life's Web. So we've got all the ramp we need, and then if we're flooding out we can always sacrifice Archive or Dreamstone Hedron. And if we ever resolve Ugin the Spirit Dragon against the Hondon's deck, they're also probably going to be dead. Well, there's Ugin the Spirit Dragon. If I had a land I could have cast it this turn, but uh, next turn will do. If her opponent doesn't have a Thought Seize here, they are probably going to be in trouble. Yeah, they probably just can see Tug in the Spirit Dragon here. Don't have to minus for the Hondons quite yet. Let them play another one before we minus five, maybe. And yeah. Ugin the Spirit Dragon, it's pretty hard to beat for some decks and we are capable of playing it on turn 4 in this deck if we've got uh, turn 3 Archive and 2 more Mind Stones. So yeah, I mean, sometimes you win with Ugin the Spirit Dragon, sometimes you win with a Torment of Hailfire. But uh, yeah, the deck's pretty fun to play. Slightly different take on the Mono Black Archetype with a bit more ramp as opposed to the Mastermind's Acquisition Package. Not the most competitive deck, since it is a pretty one-dimensional and fragile strategy. If you face any counter spells, they can just counter a few of your payoff cards, like Torment and Ugin, and you're just left spinning your wheels. And against some more aggressive decks, if you don't draw your early sweepers, you can just get run over before you can set up a lethal Torment of Hailfire. But not every deck needs to be Tier 1. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.